Greetings folks! Today we are going to be painting up a Tyranid with a bone color scheme. That being, it's going to just be completely skeletal. It's going to look like a skeleton wielding another skeleton. <laughs> Skeletonception. Not sure what to call this high fleet yet. Painting scheme wise, I'll probably call it something. Hmm. Oh, I got it. We can name this guy... We can name the High Fleet this belongs to. High Fleet Mikchanutli. Uh, Mikchan Teutli is a Aztec death god. Mikchan Teutli will fit perfect with these guys. Uh, it's a pretty hard name to pronounce though for those uh, not familiar with the pronunciation of Aztec words. Then again, some of them even for me are a little difficult to pronounce. Now, to begin this fellow here, we are going to be painting it with our Citadel base wraith bone. And if you're wondering why it's not in a pot and in a little dispenser like this, similar to the uh, Reaper series paints or the Wargaming paints, it's because sometimes the pots for Citadel paints sometimes uh, dry up under the rim so it's hard to close and it actually makes your paint evaporate over time. I'll be doing a little video on that in the future to show you guys to pretty much save your paint. So we're going to put some on our little base over here. And then we're going to get it on our medium basing brush. We are going to slather the whole miniature in this race bone color. And another good thing about the pots is to get your paint in there uh, just from the Citadel pots, you have to water it down just a little bit. So you already have paint that is good enough and is a little watered down for you to apply it to your miniature in two thin coats. Kind of skips the whole process and you get a perfect amount each time. Now part of the reason I based this particular Tyranid uh, Termagant miniature in black and so that way once I start applying the shades and the coats the black undertone will not only help seep the cracks in but give it a darker tone which is perfect for what we're going to do with this skeletal themed Tyranid we'll just get some more paint here cover them up I'll give them two coats and then once I'm done with the two coats we'll continue on to the rest of the Tyranid all right, now that is done drying, uh, off video I actually applied about one to two more coats of the Rake's Bone color to give it a more darker beige tone. Now, for the second part of this, we are actually going to use our Seraphim Sepia all over the miniature. Every single piece of it. Just all over the place. Get a good amount on your brush and just slap it all over the thing. Do be careful in some nooks and crannies. It might pull into it, making it way too deep in its color tone, but you can easily take that out with your brush. We're just going to be putting it all over our miniature. This will help darken the recesses, make the edges brighter, and start giving our little tyranid here its skeletal color scheme. Sort of a warm color scheme because with Tyranids they are biomechanical creatures. They are still organic so they wouldn't technically be undead just yet. With them being heavily plated with keratin, uh, chitin, not to mention their exoskeleton is gonna look a little little skeletal itself given in form. Let's get a little more bit on our brush here. Looks like it's starting to have a warm color to it. That's good. Okay, now we will leave that for about a minute or two for it to completely dry, and then we'll get started on the dry brushing stage. 
Alright, now that that is all dried up, you'll be getting a little bit of our pallid white flesh, uh, which is a citadel layer paint. And we are going to be dry brushing it onto the miniature. That way the lighter tan color can go up against our darker uh, tan color that we have going on here, like the nice dark skin beige against this very brighter skin beige. So just get on a brush, dry brush a little bit. And we're just gonna dry brush it all over the miniature. And then after that, I'll be using a little bit of Corax White to give it a little more definition and make it brighter. those little parts. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I forgot to glue it to the actual base because I kind of just pushed it in here. I didn't really glue it, so it's going to flop around a little bit. And as you see with that fix up with the dry brushing, it makes the more higher edges a little brighter. Now we are going to keep out our Corax white and apply it to our nail detail brush, or you can use a very fine tipped edge brush. And we're going to be putting it on the teeth here. I'm going to try to make the teeth as bright as possible so it can go against our fleshy tan color. We almost kind of made a, a skin tone for this whole Tyranid if you think about it really. As you see, it's already becoming very bright. Just a few more touches. There we are. Now for the next step, we are going to be using a uh, thinned down version of Contrast Black Templar. We're going to be applying this to some of the deepest cracks in the miniature. Like the vents here, the eyes, little vent holes here and there the inside of the chest, and we're just going to be putting this down into those spots. So get a little bit on the brush. We'll put it in here in this hole, give it a feel that it is hollow, or has a point of entry for the ammunition to come out from. Now it's already starting having our nice little skeletal effect going on here once that black is now applied. It's a very heavy contrast compared to the rest of the miniature. <laughs> contrast, contrast paint. For the chest vents, you can actually just not have to thin it down, just get it from the pot. It'll make it very dark, which is perfect. Put some of this little crack here, some along the neckline.
Now we will be using this part onto the fence here. The tiny little eye socket here. Pretty much does every single vent you want to have with this Black Templar. Semi thin down, of course, compared to the rest of the other applications. Because a little bit of this paint goes a long way if you use it right. And now our tyranny is starting to have a really good effect here going on. We'll just apply our very thin down version onto the talons here. Actually ignore that. So now I am going to be using the Black Templar all over the talons and the hooves so that way you can see it a little easier and give it a nice contrast since a lot of skeletal structures of let's say like avians and reptiles the claws are still a nice like dark brown or black almost so we'll be applying this to the other parts of the miniature so that way once it dries we'll have a nice like dark brown color and it'll also give a little bit of more darker shading to it too. So you just want to apply it to each of those parts. We'll also apply some to the inner side of the mouth. And I'll explain why soon enough when we get there. Now this paint scheme is actually very, very simple. And honestly, you can just do it for a whole army. Maybe build upon what you see in this video here and make it your own. Or improve on some of the techniques I'm doing. Really, all you have to do is just color it one color, do a little bit of highlighting, uh, sorry, a little bit of dry brush highlighting, some shading, and you pretty much have a miniature that's set and ready to go. Just with a few applications done. And I think it's quite effective for a very unique looking miniature as well, compared to the rest of Tyranid armies you'd see. Now for the final steps, we are going to be using a darker tan color for the carapace, since usually carapaces either fade away with time, get darker with time, or lighter in tone. So we'll be using our tan skin paint, putting it on our little wet palette slash dry palette here off in the corner putting some of that onto our brush and we are going to be applying it to the carapace so the the plates on the back the head and the thighs right here we'll be using this color with You want to make it as smooth and defined color-wise as you can, so that way the darker tan can separate itself from the rest of your, like, skeletal tan color you have going on here. I know I said tan a lot in this, but <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much what is going on here. Now that that is done, I'm going to dry for a few seconds, because this type of paint dries fairly quickly. Now we'll be getting our seraphim sepia again, putting it on a brush. And this time we're not going to put it all over it, we're actually going to put it into the darker, the very recesses of this, while the paint is still drying. This will create a weird, sort of nice shade mixture of a base paint and a shade paint. Kind of like what contrast already does for miniature. We'll just be putting that on the highest parts and the deepest parts. So that way when it's wet, 
it'll give it a nice look. We'll put some water there on the weapon too, since the weapon also has two plating. Now this particular color scheme you could easily use for High Fleet Kraken, since it already has that look, and given the warm colors, it looks pretty well. But the best part about painting your own miniatures, especially in wargaming, is you can paint them however you want. You can say whatever army they belong to, as long as they aren't based off of that army's colors. Like, for example, you you paint your army in the High Fleet uh, Leviathan color scheme. They will only be Leviathan, unless if you uh, those you're fighting against, you tell them ahead of time that they are not High Fleet Leviathan, even though their color scheme is. It would help separate them when it comes to matchmaking, but you can paint them anyway. You can have them be anyway. Same goes for any other faction. It's really a personal preference. Now, with that being dried, we will be getting our dry brush, applying some Corax White onto our dry brush. Corax White. My finger's covering it right there. Actually, this is starting to look like my skin color. <laughs> and we are going to be applying this onto the carapace. Let's give it a nice little highlight and also give it unique markings. So we'll apply applying it against the plates. Never want to go that way because it would just smear it all over it and not necessarily give it a proper highlight. So we'll put it on that side. And we'll put it on the head here. Same for that spot. A little bit of white. Now you want to be soft with this application in order not to leave heavy brush strokes into the paint job you already did. And then we'll just Put a little more around the body, highlight it a little bit. Same for this bone vent here. And there we are! One Tyranid from High Fleet Makcholli is done! Right after I apply one additional part that I totally forgot to do earlier. So when I was talking about the tongue, we can make it a little darker in tone, but with it being a, f a flesh piece, I'll actually get a little bit of our Blood Angel's Red and apply it to the tongue. You don't need a lot, you just need a little bit. Because the red tone will help blend in with the rest of it, get a nice like bloodied withered effect. Okay, now our miniature is done. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Or, if you really enjoy this color scheme and want to use it for yourself, use this video as a base and you can do the same thing I did here or change it up a little bit for yourself. Maybe add a little more unique coloration. Other than that, you folks have a great day and take care.